3D Mario is quite a rarity when it comes to game franchises to me, and I say this because unlike other subgenres of Mario games such as Mario Party or the RPG titles, others that have garnered a huge following over time, to me at least, there hasn't ever been a major drop in quality in the 3D Mario titles. I find lots of enjoyment in every single 3D Mario game that's released over the years, a generally positive opinion on each one. They've been some of the defining games on each of their respective consoles, some of the games that we look back on with fond memories over the years, not the ones that are just cast to the wayside and aren't remembered for future generations of Nintendo fans. But that doesn't mean that they're flawless. Today, as the title indicates, I'll be talking about how I both love and hate every 3D Mario that's released up until this point. There are far more positives than negatives that I can mention in relation to each one of these games, but today we're going to be discussing both two of the best and two of the worst aspects of each of these titles. I know not all of you love each of these games like I do, so whether you have a positive viewpoint on one game or a negative viewpoint on the other, you'll probably find some statement that resonates with you in this one. With all that being said, let's get started. Let's begin with the inaugural 3D Mario game. Here are a couple of things that I love about Super Mario 64. The first thing that I really love about this game is the world variety, some of which are very unique and creative. Areas such as TikTok Clock, Wet Dry World, Tiny Huge Island, Rainbow Ride, they're just some of the most creative areas we've ever seen in the series. And it's very weird to me how a lot of this creativity hasn't even been duplicated in many of the 3D Mario games. A lot of them stick with the generic scope for worlds. Oh, here's a desert world, here's a plains world, here's a mountain world, here's a sky world. Mario 64 took those basic concepts and transformed them, made something so much more unique. That's something that makes Mario 64 very special, and I definitely love it for that. Another thing that I love about Mario 64 is how it established a formula that in some ways still hasn't been bested until this day. It inspired many games in that vein for the future and accomplished the goal that it set out to do. You have a perfect hub area in this game that leads into several creative worlds as I was just talking about, an aspect of the gameplay that I don't even think has been mimicked appropriately to this day. Mario 64, despite having a massive influence on the rest of the 3D Mario games is still unique in many ways. Now on to a couple of things that I hate about Mario 64. The first thing is the camera, which can get in the way a lot, making it difficult to pull off jumps. When you're playing through a 3D platformer, you definitely want precision when you're jumping. After all, a lot of these jumps contain a life or death risk for our favorite plumber. And if the camera is what's preventing you from executing that jump and not a challenge that's imposed by the game itself, that's just poor design. Thankfully for many of the 3D Mario titles that followed this, the camera has been improved, but for Mario 64, because they were just starting out and the circumstances that they had surrounding the development process of it, a better camera just couldn't seem to have been developed at that time. And another thing that I don't really like about Mario 64 is kicking you out of levels, because in most cases it's just to pad out the runtime of the game and not necessary. Based on the hardware limitations of the Nintendo 64, it didn't seem that new objects could be rendered in while not kicking you out of the level. So in those particular instances, it's absolutely absolutely necessary to kick you out, and I don't mind it at all. Even if they kick you out after a long stretch of a mission, after you beat a big boss for example, it makes a lot of sense. But for some of the challenges in the game, they definitely didn't need to do this, and it creates a big inconvenience while playing. Moving on to a very polarizing 3D Mario title, this being Super Mario Sunshine. And the first thing that I really love about Super Mario Sunshine is the new additions that it brought to the franchise. Many aspects about this game are very unique, and it took many risks that paid off and have had a lasting impact on the series. Several of the villains in the game, such as Bowser Jr., Petey Piranha, and Shadow Mario have gone on to become icons of the series and have appeared in many games following this. While on the other hand, the main location introduced Isle Delfino as one of the most memorable worlds in the entire series. The whole game blends together well, and the lasting impact its characters and locale have created should not go understated. And the next thing that I love about Super Mario Sunshine is some aspects about Flood. Flood was a unique addition that really made you feel like you're cleaning up a tropical island. If that was the goal, then they succeeded in replicating that in the game. While the autocorrect function of sorts for jumping doesn't necessarily reward skillful gameplay all the time, it still can create some fun and unique scenarios, and I'm glad that they tried something new here. But the first thing that I hate about Super Mario Sunshine is in relation to this a little bit, and it's the collision and glitches. A lot of it comes from Flood's relation to platforming, with no example being more infamous than the pachinko machine level in Super Mario Sunshine. But even without Flood, sometimes the collision can just be very wonky. You'll jump onto a platform without Flood, and you won't even seem to land on it properly as you intended. The game just feels very slippery 
slippery. Ironic for a game where you're spraying water everywhere, but that's honestly just one of the best ways that I can describe how controlling Mario feels in this game. I get that some people like this and it feels a little bit more raw to them, but for me this control format combined with the collision and various glitches spread throughout the game hinder my enjoyment of Super Mario Sunshine a lot. And the next thing that I don't like about Super Mario Sunshine is that the areas aren't too varied. I mentioned that I enjoyed that the locale had a lasting impact on the series earlier on, and while I do enjoy that there's an overall coherent theme here and it's an interesting idea, I personally enjoy playing Mario to view different scenery like in Mario 64. I like the tropical theme of Sunshine, but sometimes the areas feel a little bit too samey, and I wish they changed it up more with various levels where you still feel like you're on a tropical island, but there's a slight twist to it, a different theme and that isn't present too much throughout the game. And moving on to the next 3D Mario, and no, we're not talking about Galaxy just yet, we're also going to cover Super Mario 64 DS. While this is technically a remake of Super Mario 64, it didn't make sense not to completely touch on this game if I am going to be talking about Galaxy 2 as well, so I'll be talking about some things that I love and hate about this game, unique to that, not necessarily things that I would love and hate about the original Mario 64. As an example, let's get into the first thing that I love about it, and it's the new characters to differentiate between creating some additional challenges. Challenges. As I'm sure many of you are aware of, Mario 64 DS does not just star Mario, it stars Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Wario. They took some of the power-ups that Mario could use from the original Mario 64 and spread them throughout the characters, such as Metal Wario for example. Doing this along with giving characters unique attributes to their own, such as Luigi's strong backflip or Wario's powerful attacks, made them all very unique to play as, and there's definitely different situations where it's advantageous to choose one character rather than another. Another thing that I love about Mario 64 DS is the minigame mode, it's great for some fun distractions while playing. If you ever get tired of your 3D platforming exploration, and believe me it does happen sometimes where you get tired of playing a game and want to move on to something else, you can do that while being in the same game with the minigame mode. Some of the minigames are designed purely for a single player experience, whereas others are great for multiplayer, inviting friends to play with you. Moving on to something that I hate about Mario 64 DS, and this is the D-pad. While this definitely doesn't ruin the game for me as it does for some, it is definitely inferior when it comes to the control scheme of the original. I don't know why the DS necessarily had to be the time for Nintendo to remake Mario 64, but if they waited until the 3DS, it could have been executed so much better. This is because the 3DS has a circle pad which would allow Mario to move in 360 degrees, as opposed to just 8 directions which is limited from the D-pad on the DS. One other thing that I don't like about Mario 64 DS is some of the new worlds. I love a couple of them, such as the Poison Swamp World for example, but a couple of the others feel like filler content without much interesting to do. I use the Battle Fort level as a very prominent example of this. Yeah, it's there and there's some fun to be had, but overall it's just filler and there's not too much unique about it. I really wish that for the 3D Mario remasters, if they end up happening, that they would add more full and complete looking worlds to Mario 64, as opposed to the majority that were added in Mario 64 DS. It's not all bad, but there's a lot of mediocre stuff in there, and when the bar of quality that's set by Mario 64 is so high, yeah, you'd really expect the levels to be a little bit better than that. Moving on to the Wii's first 3D Mario title, this being Super Mario Galaxy. And the first thing that I absolutely adore about Galaxy is the amazing orchestral soundtrack. Now, being completely honest, I could use the complement of a soundtrack for almost every single one of these games on here because I enjoy so many bangers from each of these 3D Mario titles, but with Galaxy in particular, I had to use this as one of the examples because it's such a standout because it's very unique for Mario and blends so well with the theming of being in outer space. Some of the tracks being very peaceful, some of them being very epic in feel. It enhances the platforming gameplay by having a fantastic soundtrack to complement it. And the next thing that I love about Galaxy kind of goes along with that, and that's the unique aesthetic that it brings. Galaxy took a lot of risks that really paid off. It threw Mario into outer space, which, let's be honest, it wasn't really the most expected next step for the franchise, and it did have a little bit more focus on a narrative, which many fans were requesting, as it went to Rosalina's backstory a little bit more, fleshed out the character, and it eventually allowed her to fit better into a more prominent role for the main cast of Mario characters. This game really makes Mario feel like he's running through outer space, and he gets attached to some of the characters that he runs into along the way. Moving on to something that I don't like as much about Super Mario Galaxy, this being the camera. I know I use this complaint about Mario 64, and it's not going to be the last time that you hear a camera complaint in this video, but with Mario Galaxy in particular, it can be a little bit annoying at points, not letting you get a full grasp of what's going on. For the most part, I feel it works really well, but I feel that in trying hard to convey the feeling of walking around these planets, at some points, the camera just gets in the way. And the 
second thing that's not as good about Mario Galaxy is the mandatory motion controls, which were deterring for some. Although I personally thought that the motion controls worked well, it still would have been better to have it as an optional component for gameplay, like Odyssey did for the most part. Forcing people to use motion controls isn't necessarily the best idea. And moving on to the direct sequel of Super Mario Galaxy, this being Galaxy 2. What are some things that I love and hate unique to Galaxy 2? The first thing that I love is lots of new explored creativity with power-ups and the addition of Yoshi. There are also some new galaxies introduced for this game that took a lot of risks, being a bit more unconventional, but still managing to pull it off. That combined with all the great power-ups and Yoshi being a fun addition, as always, it all made me really love Galaxy 2. Another thing that I really like about Galaxy 2 is that the difficulties increase slightly, creating some additional challenge in levels. This was likely due to it being a sequel, and much more of the player base already being used to how the game plays by purchasing the first game, so you could ramp up the difficulty a little bit, and in my opinion it made the game a lot more fun. It still is a Mario game though, so I'm not going to pretend that it's the most challenging thing out there, but it is slightly more difficult compared to the original. First thing that I hate about Galaxy 2 is that some of the bosses and galaxies are very similar to those in Super Mario Galaxy 1, lacking a lot of the originality that it praised about the first galaxy. The first one had the major challenge of creating this entire atmosphere for Mario to be thrusted into. In Galaxy 2, with that atmosphere already being created, had to make things a little bit more unique. And yes, they did in some areas as I was just mentioning, but still, many bosses and galaxies are extremely similar, and that's a negative to me. And another thing that I kinda hate about Galaxy 2 is that a lot of the care that seemed to have gone into Galaxy 1 wasn't put into Galaxy 2. A lot of the extra little things like the hub world or fleshing out the lore with Rosalina as I was talking about seems to have been lost here. They really simplified things to a level select screen which doesn't feel as special in comparison and there was virtually no story at all, you just jumped right into the levels. And yes, I will stress this, 3D Mario, 2D Mario, the platforming games in the series, they don't need to have a good story but it didn't hurt in the original Galaxy to flesh out some of the characters a little bit, and in Galaxy 2, when they didn't do it, it just feels like they didn't care as much. Showing many of the true colors of the game where it was just mainly intended to capitalize on the sales of the original. It could have been a little bit more convincing with the goal that this game was trying to attain. Moving on to Super Mario 3D Land, the only 3D Mario game originally built from the ground up for a solo portable console. And one thing that I love about 3D Land is that it innovated well with a lot of interesting ideas that came with the transition of the 2D Mario style into the 3D style. It accomplished its goal of making fun levels that could be played in short bursts with the main 3D feature of the 3DS working well too. I know there's a large amount of people that watch these videos that aren't as pleased with 3D Land and 3D World for basically taking the new Super Mario Bros. style of 2D Mario games and just putting it in the 3D space and calling it a 3D Mario. It's not in the same format as a lot of the 3D Marios that I talked about in this video, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse to hate it. You can hate the idea behind the game, but what it was trying to pull off, it succeeded in doing so, and that's something that I love about it, a game that accomplishes its goal. And another thing that I love about 3D Land is that there are 8 extra worlds mainly containing harder versions of previous levels here. More content and more challenge if you want it. While the first half of the game I'd say is relatively easy, at least there's more challenge here for the people who were able to beat the game and were looking for something more. Moving on to the first thing that I hate about 3D Land, and this is a pretty big one, it's the lack of boss variety. The only bosses in the game are versions of Bowser, Boom Boom, and Pom Pom, both of which are very similar to one another. This was obviously just to save some time, but you've got so many creative characters that have been seen in 3D Mario titles over the years as bosses, then you go to 3D Land and this is what you get, it was very disappointing. Another thing that I don't like about 3D Land is the power-up selection. There are not too many unique and useful power-ups. You got the Fire Flower, which is a standard one, then you got all the variations of Tanuki Mario, which are all separately classified as their own power-ups to spread out the count, and then you got that Boomerang Flower, which is just an underdone version of the Fire Flower. It looks cool, but it's definitely not as useful in practice. And other 3D Mario games have done significantly better in this department. Moving on to Super Mario 3D World, basically 3D Land, but a little bit better. The first thing that I love about 3D World is the fun multiplayer to make the linear level scheme more interesting. While I personally like the more open-ended 3D Mario games, I'm not going to hate 3D Land and 3D World just for the fact that they're more linear. But if you did hate the games for that reason, the multiplayer can make things significantly more fun. You could be the guy on your team who's trying to finish the level first, you could be the one who's trying to rack up the most points to get that crown on your head, or you could be that one guy who sits in the bubble and lets everybody else do the work. Gotta love those people. And the next thing that I love about 3D World is the unique and varied level design. Unlike 3D Land, there are a ton of unique power-ups in 3D World that make things a lot more interesting. And along with that, 
that there are many interesting gimmicks throughout the levels that make things a lot more fun. But along with all the positives, there are always a couple of things that I don't like about these 3D Mario games, so what's the first thing that I hate about 3D World? The worlds lack an appropriate theming. You'll be in a winter world and then you'll suddenly see a plains level throughout it. It doesn't make sense at all. Again, as I've established previously throughout this video, I love level variety, but put the winter levels in the winter world and then take the desert levels and put them in the desert world. Then you'll simultaneously have that variety of level theming while also making each world individually coherent. It's something that Mario 64 pulls off perfectly. And the next complaint is going to be the last camera complaint in the video, but the zoomed out camera in multiplayer makes it very difficult to land precise jumps, which can get annoying at points because it's a casualty of what's otherwise a really great feature. Again, as I previously established, the multiplayer is one of my favorite aspects about 3D World, but when you've got a camera that makes things way more difficult than they need to be to execute jumps, and not difficult in a good way, it just ruins some of the experience. On some levels, this isn't nearly as bad, but on some, it generally makes them a lot more difficult to play through when in multiplayer. And last up today is the most recent 3D Mario game being Super Mario Odyssey. And the first thing that I obviously love about Odyssey because I've said it in several videos by now, is the capture mechanic. It's a brilliant and unique power-up substitute that's very fun to use. You want to make it so you don't have to put the fire flower in this game? Great, just capture a fire bro and now you can go and shoot fireballs everywhere. It's a fantastic idea and I'd love to see it carried over for an Odyssey sequel because there's so much potential left with many more enemies. The next thing that I love about Super Mario Odyssey is a bit more subtle and not a lot of people are mentioning it as much, but it's that coins actually have an important purpose in this game. With the amazing idea of giving creative outfits that Mario you can wear, spicing up the experience and making yours unique compared to almost everybody else's, and coins are the thing that you use to buy them, it's great and there's actually an incentive to pick them up this time around. And they also provide a great substitute for lives, a way outdated mechanic. You lose 10 coins whenever you die in the game, and that's 10 less coins that you could be spending on a new outfit for yourself. But then comes my first complaint about Super Mario Odyssey, the first thing that I hate about the game, this being the abundance of easy moons to obtain. Moons were an interesting addition into Super Mario Odyssey, because yeah, there's lots of moons that are great and they have the same amount of challenge as a star would in Super Mario 64. But then when you realize that a boss has to give you three moons, known in the game as a multi-moon, then you gotta get that there was some sort of issue going on here. Why does a boss fight have to reward you with three of these moons when there are some decent challenges in the game that only give you one? And that's mainly because of there's an abundance of moons that are extremely easy to obtain throughout the game. This completely trivializes the idea of getting a moon. It's ridiculous to me and they probably just did to get it up to the 999 counter as a promotional tool for the game. I would have significantly preferred if every moon had an in-depth challenge behind it and we got 300 instead of 999 but I digress. And again, with padding out the moons comes the second thing that I hate about Super Mario Odyssey, and this is padding out the world count with several uneventful ones. Sure, you got a bunch of big worlds with a lot of stuff to do, New Donk City and the Sand Kingdom spring to mind, and there are a bunch of other ones that I like as well, but then you have worlds like the Cloud Kingdom, the Ruin Kingdom, even Bonneton, which is the starting area in the game, all worlds that don't have too much depth, and there's not that much to do. My god, Ruin Kingdom is basically a glorified boss arena. It could have been so much more, and it almost made me feel at the time like they were going to add DLC to make these areas expand and create more content for them, but that never ended up happening. In Super Mario Odyssey 2, I hope they either flesh out those worlds, or just make all the worlds in the game have an abundance of content, rather than having several excuses for worlds throughout the game just to pad out the count, they make it seem like there's that much more content there, masquerading the fact that a lot of these worlds have no substance whatsoever. But that's just my opinion, and I encourage you to let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. Remember to subscribe with all notifications on so that you do not miss new content that's on your way very soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.